Were you guys familiar with the previous adaptations of this, the anime, and had you seen them? Or did you know? Yeah, I've seen all of them. I think the the manga was uh, was when I was young, and then you know the anime obviously was the most impressive. I think for a lot of people, and when people talk about Ghost in the Show, a lot of people refer to that. Uh, but uh, I think the manga is a masterpiece, and then also the television shows, uh, standalone complex, which itself is also genius. And I think what happens here in this film is such an incredible uh, experience too. It's like the sensory experience in some ways. What are you most excited, perhaps maybe an action sequence, something else, most excited for the audience to see in this? Oh, the, the, the last 10 minutes and the first 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. and, and everything in between. Exactly. <laughs> 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 kind of narrows it down. Um, narrows it down, I think the last 10 minutes are incredible. Talk to me about working in a, as an actor in an environment where there's so much sort of computer-generated imagery and, and there's going to be things that don't exist maybe at the moment. But how did that play out for you? But Rupert, hmm. Rupert really wanted this to be as realistic as possible. Yes. So we, we, we didn't have that much green screen. We didn't have that much where, you know, oh, there's going to be a monster arriving or something. Yeah. And that kind of helped. It, it kind of helps. It kind of helps us actors. So we don't need to use our imagination. Yeah, because so uh, the structure's all there, you know, I mean, it's all built, uh, the structures are built, the cars that we're driving are the cars that we're driving, the guns are actually fully operational guns. Uh, nothing is, you know, I mean, everything is for real, and that's, that's really uh, good for an actor. Uh, but he also has, he has brought this aesthetic that is, you know, that grants us in reality, so you have something like as modern as an echo box that actually looks like an old sound amplifier. Yeah. And, and then he builds upon that and then all the fantastical elements go on top of that. But he first grounds you in, in the reality. I like that element of it because it does give you this idea of like, wow, what if? What if we end up in some way, if, if the future is going to mirror this in some way or there's going to be any parallel? How, in your, in your world? I don't think it's going to be a what, what if. I think it's going to be when. And so when do you think, when do you think it'll be that there's this interplay between humanity and robotics at this level or anything even close to it? When my daughter is my age. Yeah. I mm -hmm. think so. And that's going to be in the next 30 years. And what do you think that would look like? Like this movie. <laughs> We've seen it, right? Yeah, here. you've seen this it. But thing. Rupert did what uh, <laughs> Rupert did a, a prophecy of the future somehow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. You know what? I remember when I saw Blade Runner for the first time. That felt so realistic. And I kind of got the same feeling when I saw Ghost in the Shell, and I'm not comparing Blade Runner with Ghost in the Shell, mm -hmm. but still, I felt like, wow, you found reality in a sci-fi film. That's what he created in my mind.